The Lord be with you. Welcome to our morning worship service. We're glad you're here. Masking and standing during the hymns is optional. Um, you may put your offering in the plates at the back of the sanctuary as we will not be passing those. If you're a guest, we extend a special welcome. If you have any questions, we can answer for you about the life and ministry here at Mount Olive Presbyterian Church. Please feel free to seat Reverend Diane or me after the service and greet your neighbors and welcome our guests at the end. I invite you to review the announcements in the back of the bulletin and like to bring your attention to the following. A four-week evening study of the gospel according to Mayberry begins this Tuesday at 6 p.m. Each week the group will view one episode of the Andy Griffith Show and with the help of scripture discuss how its message applies to our faith. The class will last one hour and you're welcome to bring your dinner or a snack. I'd like to thank everyone for their generosity. We received over $500 in offering on Easter Sunday um, in response to the one great hour of sharing. Uh, the Presbytery takes this money and distributes it in our country and around the world to help with disaster assistance, the hunger program, and the self-development of people. We thank you for that very generous offering. Lee Sargent goes on the 5th to a cardiologist to receive a heart monitor, and he continues with chemotherapy tomorrow. Are there other announcements? We pray for Lee. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. During the prelude, you're invited to pray for the needs of this church, family, for our community, the nation, the world, for those leading worship, and for the church of Jesus Christ all over the world.
<clears throat> Please join me in our responsive call to worship printed in the bulletin. O oh Lord, our God, we praise you. We cry to you for help. And you answered us. You have restored our lives. You have rescued us from the grave. We will worship you today and always. Please stand as you are able, and we will sing hymn 338, Be Thou My Vision. 339, Be Thou My Vision. Seated, please. When your soul is suffering in silence, call out to the Lord our God who heals our brokenness, who lifts us up from the pit and restores our lives. Let us confess our sin to God and before one another. Let's pray in unison. Lord God, in the light of your glory, we see the evil we have done, the suffering we have caused, the good we have refused, and the truth we have denied. Heal us of our sin, wash us in your mercy, and feed us with your grace, so that we may follow your way and tell the good news of the gospel. Amen. Rise up from the dust, cast off the shroud of sorrow, and put on the joy of the Lord. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. The Old Testament lesson is Psalm 30. Listen for the word of the Lord. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord my God, I called you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit Sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. 
Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favored me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silenced, if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim, proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turn my wailing into dancing. You remove my sackcloth and clothe me with joy that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord my God, I will praise you forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, our next hymn is found on page six of your bulletin. And I'm going to explain how we do it. And basically, we'll just follow Kathy. But anyway, we're going to sing the first two lines twice. Then we will sing the remainder once. Then we will go back to the top and sing the first two lines once. So it's twice, once, and once. All right, good luck. <laughs> Great job, everyone. A joyful noise to the Lord. And thank you, Marianne, for uh, leading us this morning as well. Well, our second scripture lesson, our gospel lesson, comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 21. And um, while I'm going to begin at verse 10, I'd like to give a little bit of an introduction uh, because I'm sort of skipping the first part of the story. So this is another of Jesus' resurrection appearances. And today um, it focuses very deeply on the interaction between Jesus and Simon Peter and the other disciples as they are fishing. So that's the beginning of the story. They've had no luck catching anything. They've been fishing all night. And that's a familiar theme. We remember that from 
uh, the story of Jesus' ministry. Several times these miracles have happened. And so there's this figure on the beach, and they don't know who it is, but he calls out to them and says, hey, drop your nets over there. And they do. And uh, John tells us they catch so many fish that the net is just too heavy to haul in. And so the disciples then recognize Jesus, something clicks, and when they make their way to shore, they discover that he's got a fire going and he's intending to share breakfast with them and cook them some fish. So let's pick up the story then at verse 10. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you've just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. It was now the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they'd finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my lambs. And again, Jesus asked, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him for the third time, do you love me? And Peter said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus again said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And then Jesus said to him, follow me. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. And now, O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, the man wearing the prison-issued jumpsuit weeps as he discusses his past. In 1998, he was sentenced to 48 years for second-degree murder. Chris Vogt is now prisoner 100765, and he is doing what we would call hard time. But for a boy with autism and his family, vote is something of a savior. Now the Colorado prison where Chris Vote is serving out his sentence provides inmates with shelter dogs to train, typically making them into service dogs to help the hearing impaired or the blind. Chris Vote decided to take it further. With nothing but time on his hands, he read all that he could about autism and came up with unique training techniques for these service dogs aimed at helping children on the spectrum overcome behavioral and emotional challenges. Now the parents of Zachary Tucker, who was age nine at that time, they were desperate. Zach was refusing to be touched his anxiety sometimes ran so high that during class he would get down on the floor and just curl up in a ball. So on weekends through a program, the family began visiting the high security prison where Chris Vogt was doing his time so that Zachary could work with Chris and eventually take home one of his dogs. Zach's new dog, Clyde, a chocolate lab, 
is trained to nudge and poke him whenever he senses anxiety is building in Zach. And then he curls up next to him. It's working. Zach has been calm enough to socialize with other kids. His grades have improved. He's even beginning to find some acceptance among his peers. His life has changed dramatically because of time spent with Chris Vogt and the gift of the service dog, Clyde. And in your bulletin, you probably already noticed the picture of the three of them together at the prison as Zach is learning to work with Clyde. And you can see Clyde sort of looking up at Chris and then Zach um, holding the leash. So now from the prison yard, um, as he was interviewed, Chris Vogt speaks of redemption. This is the thing I get to do that gives back, he says. When Zach and even the other kids get to work with me, they don't see the murderer anymore. This has given me a chance to do something better, to make up for. He pauses. Well, not actually make up. I can never do that. But it puts me on the path. Now, this story was featured a few years ago on the ABC Evening News, and I've never forgotten it for various reasons. But each time I revisit it, when I remember the background and I see that picture, the word that springs to my mind is resurrection. Chris Vogt is guilty of the ultimate sin, taking the life of another. And society has every right to write him off as dead, as finished, as beyond forgiveness or redemption. And yet somehow, because he has been given a second chance and he is making the most of it, he feels that he is in some way finding redemption and is finding a new beginning. Now both our scripture lessons today speak about that idea of newness coming from the old, from sorrow, from tragedy, from sin, and how God is at work through that. From the wailing and weeping of the night, joy can come in the morning through the power of God. And our second scripture lesson, our gospel especially, focuses in on that new beginning that is given to Peter. You remember, Peter, we all do, the trusted disciple, Jesus' right-hand man, his rock, who failed his friend and Lord just when he needed him the most. Remember these words, though all may become deserters of you, I will never desert you, Lord, Peter boasts. Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And then he did just that, asserting three times, I do not know him, when questioned after Jesus' arrest. <coughs> and then the rooster crows, just as Jesus predicted, and Peter realizes what he has done. And oh, he weeps bitterly. And then Jesus is put to death, and some of you know that feeling. The opportunity for closure seems to be gone because Peter can never express to Jesus just how sorry he is. And so today in our gospel text, we see Peter going back to what he knows to do, fishing. No doubt trying to recapture some of the usefulness of his old life. But even there, he's a failure. He cannot catch anything. And then Jesus appears. You know the story. The fish roll in. The disciples' eyes are open. They recognize Jesus. There are smiles and glad reunion. And yet there still is this thing standing between Peter and Jesus. And so when breakfast is over, Jesus initiates the conversation he asked Peter three questions. Actually, he asked the same question three times. A poignant echo of the three denials that Peter made. So for the first time, Jesus says, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? 
So in other words, Jesus is saying, first, do you still claim to love me better than anyone else? Because we know that those bragging rights really are not yours. So let's stop all the comparisons. Just you and me. Do you love me, Peter, with all your heart and with all your soul, your mind and your strength? And this time, will you stick with me even when the going gets rough? And Peter answers, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And then Jesus says, feed my lambs. So before it was fish for people, now it's feed my lambs. In other words, if you love me, show it by loving others in my name. From now on, Peter, you will be a shepherd to my people. They're all broken in some way, just like you. Can you help me make them new? Will you encourage them no matter how they look, think, sound, smell, act? Will you find my people wherever they may be wandering and bring them into the good pasture that I have prepared for them? So then Jesus, for the second time, Simon Peter, son, uh, son of John, John, excuse me, John, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And again, take care of my sheep. And then the third time comes and the gospel writer tells us that Peter flinches. He is hurt when Jesus says, Simon, son of John, do you love me? No doubt he remembers those three denials and surely Jesus does. Now Jesus isn't going to sweep this under the rug. He's not just going to pick up with Peter as if nothing happened. He's going to help Peter walk through this, to walk through this sin into the newness of redemption. Because it doesn't have to define who Peter is, just like your sin, your mistakes don't have to define who you are or who I am. Jesus has already forgiven Peter, but now Peter has to forgive himself. And so Peter replies to Jesus, Lord, you know all things. You know me inside and out. You know that I love you. And this reminds me of Easter Sunday when we heard about Mary Magdalene in the garden next to the empty tomb. And Jesus says her name and then he calls her into a new responsibility for the Lord. Well, today, this is Peter's call story, his second call story, because as we said earlier, he was called to leave his nets behind and to follow Jesus three years ago. But now it's a new world, an Easter world of new beginnings. And so again, Jesus almost formally does it. He says, Simon, son of John, or Simon Bar-Jonah in the Aramaic. And you know how it is when somebody uses your full name, they want your full attention. And then Jesus gives him a holy task, follow me, he says. So step away from your nets, leave that old life behind. I have work for you to do, Peter, and I have faith that you can do it. But notice still, even now, Jesus is still as forthright as ever about the risks of following him. A shepherd must be prepared to die for his flock. But this time, Peter is different. He hears the message from the Easter side of the cross. It's a different world now. What can death do to me, he is thinking. He's prepared to go even where he would rather not go. And one day we know that he will be walked to a cross in far off Rome and hung there, according to Christian lore, hung upside down because he did not want to in any way try to emulate what Jesus had done. And he gives his life for his faith. But right now on that beach, Peter is ready to live out of and lead from Christ's resurrection power and the newness that it provides. 
So Peter's is a story of grace at work in one life. But it could be any of us there on that beach in his place, desperate for a second chance. Just like it could be any of us in that prison, like Chris Vogt, desperate for some way to put some good back into the world after committing a horrible, what seems to be unforgivable sin. Because who among us hasn't sinned, messed up, fallen short of the glory of God? Who among us haven't felt at one time or another dead in our transgressions as if we have been buried and put in the grave? The joy and meaning of life is gone. Everything is in shades of gray and black and white, and God seems very far away. Yet today, as Mary Ann so beautifully shared, the psalmist reminds us, Lord, my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down into the pit. And that's the gospel truth. No matter how deep the hole that we are digging for ourselves, God's love goes deeper still. And that's the good news of Easter. We are worthy. We are of value. We will always be useful in some way for the kingdom, not because of anything we have done, but because of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. So in Peter's second chance, in his recommissioning, or in the story of Chris Vogt, or in Clyde's story, a throwaway shelter dog, or in Zach's story, what we might call an oddball, somebody who doesn't fit. In one of those stories today, I hope that you will find maybe your story dovetailing and intersecting. And I hope that you will hear the risen Christ calling you as well, calling you by name, lifting you out of whatever sins you are carrying and telling you, go on now, spread the good news that I am alive and so are you because of me. So friends, in this season of Easter, let us live like Easter people, in word and in deed, helping to feed Christ's sheep and to tend to his flock. All thanks be to God who gives us the victory, not only in the next world, but right here and now, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, as we prepare now to come to God in a time of prayer, I would, of course, invite you to turn your attention to the uh, names and the situations on the back of our bulletin, on our prayer concerns page. Um, I would, uh, of course, as we mentioned, Lee Sargent and family, let us pray for him as he begins uh, another round of chemo and also is fitted for a heart monitor. Also, some update on little Aubrey Blizzard. Um, she was supposed to go home on Tuesday, but um, actually needs one more surgery, and I know it, it's brain surgery, so it is not simple, but um, God bless her. She is a little fighter. They feel like if they get her through this next surgery, she can go home. So we um, offer you know, our prayers and pray for God's hand of protection as she's able to be with her family full time. Um, Kathy had emailed me and said that 
um, little Emma and Aubrey have been able to meet and have a few um, times together, and I'm sure that is just a beautiful thing. So we, we celebrate her tenacity and the goodness of the Lord and ask you to continue to pray for her whole family. Um, we also added to our list Charles Ivey. I know he is a colleague of some and, and known to many as he is um, continuing to have treatments um, at Duke Raleigh. We want to continue to pray for he and his family uh, during this time. Are there others? Announcements? Um, updates? Joys? Um, Selena, how's your mom? Did your appointment go okay at the surgeon? Oh, good. Yeah, I understand. It's slow. Okay. Okay, so we'll continue, of course, to pray for uh, Miss Vini Jordan. Um, the magical bone stimulator is helping her to heal, and we add to that our prayers and God's goodness and pray for her. Any others? Michael. Sarah Wiggins had a surgery before the Pickle Festival. Surgery went well. However, part of what they took out really wasn't satisfactory. Mm -hmm. So she's got to start treatment. So to okay. Surgery. Thank you. So um, Michael brought an update on Sarah Wiggins, who's on our ongoing concerns list. Uh, she had surgery before the pickle festival, had her thyroid removed. Um, the surgery itself went well, but um, the margins indicate that she needs to um, have some follow-up um, treatment. So she'll be beginning, be, be beginning a regimen of chemotherapy. So continue to pray for Sarah and Matt and all the family at this time. Okay. Well, if there are uh, no others to uh, verbalize, of course, God knows what we carry with us today and is ready to receive all that we offer. So let us come to God in prayer, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Living Lord, we've been fed by your word and filled with your spirit in this time of worship. As we seek to follow you this day and always, we bring to you our intercessions for those people and places both near and far in need of your healing and peace. We pray for your church everywhere and for Mount Olive Presbyterian in particular, that we would recognize the presence of the living Christ in our midst and live with truth and joy, serving one another to the glory of your name. We pray for all leaders and people around the globe that your spirit would teach them, each of us, to live justly, uprightly, morally, and peacefully with one another. We mourn the continued areas of conflict in our world, especially in Ukraine and other places that remain in our headlines, Syria, Myanmar, Haiti, and others. We pray for the community, uh, uh, our community here, for its people and our leaders, both elected and volunteer, those who lead through their example. We ask that you would especially protect and keep safe our police, our first responders, in their important and often dangerous work. We pray for all who suffer grief or illness of any kind, May your healing presence abide with them in their need. And we pray for those who have died, trusting that your steadfast love shelters them in the peace of your eternal light. Oh God, we thank you for filling our lives with love and grace, with purpose, more than we can ask or imagine. Receive our prayers this day, for we make them in the power of your life-giving spirit. And through the grace of Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. Now I invite you to stand as you are able as we affirm what it is we believe using words from the Heidelberg Catechism. Uh, please, please stand. What is your only comfort in life and in death? That I belong, body and soul, in life and in death, not to myself, but to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ, who at the cost of his own blood has fully paid for all my sins and has completely freed me from the dominion of the devil that he protects me so well that without the will of my Father in heaven, not a hair can fall from my head. Indeed, that everything must fit his purpose for my salvation. Therefore, by his Holy Spirit, he also assures me of eternal life and makes me wholeheartedly willing and ready from now on to live for him. Now we join together in our final hymn, in our blue hymnal, 324, Open My Eyes That I May See. response to the love of God in Jesus Christ. Let's just take a moment and think on those questions in silence. Now please join me in our response or our unison blessing of our offerings printed in the bulletin. Gracious God, each day is a new day for us to serve, to love, to give. We are grateful. Bless the work of this congregation and our individual witness in the world to your goodness. 
for we ask it in Jesus' name and through his power. Amen. <laughs> And now let us go forth into the world, trusting that God will open our eyes, our hearts, our hands, our lives to do his work in the world. And as we go, know that all the blessings of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will be with us all. Amen. Amen.